to another episode of Live from Stubbs. I'm Kyle Flaherty, and I'm joined today by Greg Matthews, WCG. It's one of our first times hosting together without Aaron Stroud. Um, and I'll be honest, I don't miss him at all. Yes. Um, so we're actually joined today by Do 512 President and Co-Founder Jimmy Stewart, and General Manager Kristen Owen. And let me kind of start off with a really simple question for you guys. For those in our audience who don't know, what does Do 512 do? Well, Do 512 is a place where you go find out everything that's happening in Austin. And I say place because it's not limited to the website, but we try to you know, have a strong presence across all the social media platforms. People engage with us, some exclusively on email. I've met people who thought that we were just an email list, you know, <laughs> like Thrillist, and, um, and, or exclusively on Twitter, Facebook. So uh, generally speaking, Do, Do 512 is a place where you go find out all the stuff happening in Austin at even night. It's, uh, it's kind of an event calendar on steroids. Uh, cool. Uh, a, a, events first, kind of social media second, but primarily a place to find out where to go have a good time. So the concept of having a place where you go and find something, you know, find something to do is not a new one. Kristen, what's the, what's the secret sauce behind Do 512? What makes it special? Uh, several things, really. I think at our core, we, uh, we don't, other places, so aggregate events that they use some sort of back end platform that's national and they, they, they get the, the basics but they don't really have like any sort of real grasp on Austin or any sort of authenticity towards what we have going on here. Um, so in large part that's due to our developers and our amazing back end. Mm -hmm. And then beyond that, we do things to make our content a lot richer and a lot more useful for our users. We aggregate recommendations from all the other media properties in Austin, be it print, radio, bloggers, DJs, everyone who has like an expert recommendation, we aggregate those that information and tell people what's good to do. It's not really like there's so many events, but most people just want to know like what's fun and what's popular. And so we make that easy for people to find out. Cool. We also just have rich content, audio, video, you know, one stop shop for finding out everything. And a big, to add to that, a big differ differentiator is like, you know, you have most media will have sort of everything going on and a handful of two or three recommendations. Our events are sorted by popularity, by user popularity. Right. So it's a real kind of okay. like voice. So I wanted to talk yeah. about a little bit of that because getting above the noise is a huge deal. I mean, we're at Stubbs, there's tons of concerts, tons of events. Austin is just full of live music and other um, types of things. So the user rating, the I like it type of um, thing, like how helpful has that been? And um, how does that work a little bit if you could take folks through that? Well, I mean, it, you know, it's really kind of at the core of it because, you know, the way people use our site typically, they'll go and they'll, they're going to look at, you know, let's say they have friends coming in for the weekend. They're going to look at what's happening on any Saturday night. And, and our events are ranked by popularity based on the number of likes that they have combined with kind of an algorithm of like what we call our all-star pick. So if it's at a really popular venue, it'll suddenly rise higher in the rankings. If it's, if it's, a, if it's a band that's gotten lots of votes in the past from previous like our other media all-stars, it'll suddenly rise higher. So... There's there, there, there's somewhat of a you know a little you know algorithm there that determines that, but primarily it's popularity of band venue you know uh, like an all location yeah. Okay. yeah yeah so uh, it's it's kind of everything it's at the core of our of everything that yeah. we do you yeah. know. So I followed Do Five One Two on Twitter ever since I moved to Austin, um, which was a great way for me to get introduced. It was one of the things I pulled into my Google Reader that was always I wanted to know what was going on in Austin. Um, but I've discovered more recently some more features on the site, like being able to plug in the bands that I like the most and figure out what's going on with them. Mm -hmm. What are what are some of the most popular features that you uh, that you have, both you know in Twitter and Facebook on the site itself? I mean, I certainly feel that basic level just the ability to interact and like it and get benefits such as a discounted entry at a door or an opportunity to win tickets and just the basics like that are extremely popular. And that's the basis of it. The ability to follow bands, which is for me the best thing that we have on the site. I mean, not only do you get emails when they come to town, if you, they're in South by, if you follow them, we auto populate a schedule. You don't even have to look for where they're playing. Um, and I think those are, those are the main things. I mean, the audio and the video and for festivals, you can, like, just for Fun 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 Fest, if you were to, I should probably use ACL. If you were to go to that page, you can actually auto generate the player of every band that's playing and you can yeah. listen to it while you browse the web. You don't have to stay on the page. Um, I think those are really covering the basics. You mentioned just live music content and stuff like that. You guys actually have a lounge type of... Um, yeah. Could you, we were talking about it beforehand. Well, about a, yeah, about a, a year, 
actually, we're we're coming up on on, on one year anniversary oh, of right. the Do Five One Two Lounge, and this was kind of spawn, you know, spawned from an idea. You know, I always sort of like loved the idea of having you know great bands playing in my living room, and never really thought it, never it to be a season. Never, right. no one showed up. <laughs> um, yeah, so no one showed up. Um, so we took over this extra space, and we you know we cut a door out. It was right next door to us, and we. We, we decked it out wall to wall, red yeah. velvet, cocktail tables, disco ball. Is even that how your living room used to look? It's all the things that I want. Yeah, totally. Okay, yeah. Yeah. And uh, and we you know we decided to start uh, you know because because we're a media resource, we're bands. We realize get big benefit from when they're you know coming here and they want to play a show and date. You know, we'll typically do you know Waterloo or KUT or they'll do various sessions to promote themselves. Yeah. We're we're in the perfect place as a local media property in the live music capital of the world to give that extra layer of promotion to bands, create a quality piece of, you know, a, a video content with great audio and a really cool vibe atmosphere with, you know, genuine fans. And uh, and uh, it's been hugely successful. We, 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 we've had 70 bands in there in, in, uh, wow. in, in the first 11 in months. Year. Wow. Yeah. And you were saying, we're, was there a, the, the band that's behind us right now is yeah. going to play <laughs> later tonight. It's was it's one been, of the yeah. first or the first? Saints of Valerie was, yeah. was the right. first band that played the, the second one was the Black yeah. Angels. I think we need to have them on the show. January, yeah. yeah. I think that's pretty a good idea. idea. I think there are some folks in our production team who would be really excited. I've about heard. Them. They really like them. Yeah. yeah. And uh, but, but as the reputation, you know, that builds up, it, it, it's been really exciting to kind of watch. In, in the beginning, it was trying to convince a lot of people to, you know, come and play here, educating them on who we are right. and like, why it's helpful to them to come and play a free show at our little lounge, and now we've built up these relationships with, you know, promoters and management, and the bands were understand and recognize, and in the old days, you used to go in, you know, I say the old days, it's still happening now, <laughs> you go into, you know, to do a live radio, to, to do a radio broadcast, and you happen to catch whoever's listening, the, you know, the, 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 the few hundred people who are listening at that moment in their car or whatever, and, and, and the ability to do that actually in front of a live audience, to capture this awesome piece of video that they can share with all their, you know, fans, and, uh, and, and and directly promote a show happening that night, like you know, and you know, move more tickets is mm -hmm. is, uh, yeah. is is a helpful you know thing for them to. So that's it's really interesting because what you're talking about is creating a great piece of content, and you just illustrated one of the ways that that content can be useful to the artist, for example, so that they can use it to promote their own show or whatever it is they're doing that night. What are some of the other things that you're doing um, at Do Five One Two to take the content that you have? and make it available to a broader audience to help to scale? Well, on the lounge side, I think one thing that's interesting is two things that we don't do are create our own content typically, mm -hmm. and once an event happens, it's sort of, it's gone. You know, we just tell people where to go by aggregating content. So this gives us something that's our brand to live on. It's great for marketing. It's great for getting people back to the site, that sort of thing. Um, it's, our, it's our own, like, one piece of content that we're actually creating. Um, and then I actually don't remember the rest of your question. Well, Just talking about what can you? Yeah. There are all kinds of interesting things you can do once you own a piece of content. You know, what are some what are some other ways that you're, you know, purposing that? Um, Partnership with Shiner, the way we're. I, I think you know generally we we it, it you know our content is ever changing, right? I mean, it's it's we're 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 a calendar essentially. So once something happens, it's sort of here today, gone tomorrow. We store and keep all those files. We we have uh, uh, we you know we have. You know, photo crews that we go to bring out, recap, and capture content so that mm -hmm. we can use it for the promotion of, you know, bands or events in the future. Um, but we, uh, you know, that, that that's this this is the one area we we realized early on that like we're not in the content creation business. For us, that's not a feasible thing to do. We don't, other than like you know, writing blog posts about the various sure. events that we're supporting and stuff like that. We don't really generate content. We try to cover stuff. We have a staff of people that go out and, you know, and cover events. But we're, you know, we have a sort of a specific purpose as we see it to our users. And, and for us, everything is about the quality of the user experience. There's a reason why people come to our site at, over the alternatives, the other event listing sites where we try to organize and present the information in, in a way that's, that, that's natural, logical, and it, you know, and, and it kind of serves their needs. And, provides what they're looking for, and mostly it's like, what are the top three or four cool things happening on any given night? And, and, uh, and, and, and the ability to, uh, you know, to, to uh, you know, and that's kind of also, you know, a big challenge that we have is, is, is trying to constantly, you know, stay on top of the game, push out relevant content that people care about, and, 
end up ultimately just having a product that beats you know, the competition. Awesome. Another thing that we do with content, now that you mentioned it, is we're now in the process of sort of sharing it with all the other outlets in Austin. So, you know, 10 or 20 different websites are now carrying our content on their sites or their version of our content. They pick what they want to carry and we carry that. So with Facebook, we have a fancy new little app that, you know, venues can use and users can use and, you know, just we want to distribute the content and, and that be our core. Cool. I think that's a great place to kind of end the first segment of uh, Live from Stubbs with uh, Do 512. And we'll be right back to talk a little bit uh, more about social media and some music and some barbecue. Thanks. <laughs>